This is Gail. Welcome to my live stream. I see that Women's Station channel is already in here. So, hi and welcome. Hope you all are doing great tonight. We have hopefully got a great stream lined up. Several of you have asked some questions about the service dog, and I am sorry for last week. Um, YouTube did its thing. So, once again, we're at the mercy of the YouTube gods. So, <laughs> I'm pulling up my second computer right now. I've got, you're on my phone, but I wanted to get my second computer opened up here. Uh, really, I shouldn't say second computer. It's my laptop. So, let me get it opened up so I can keep up with any comments that you guys leave. So, yeah. Yeah. You just a second, and I know we got it posted in the group. Stellar Piper is in, so hi, Stellar Piper. How are you? I hope you are doing well. And it looks like... Okay, I've got this coming in. So I know last week kind of didn't go well, um, and I'm sorry for that. We jumped over, switched from YouTube on over to Facebook Live. Uh, a lot of you said you're not on Facebook, so you couldn't see the Facebook Live. That's why I'm trying to do this all over again tonight. And I know that several of you have asked, where does the service dog sleep um, when we're on the road trip to Kansas in the travel trailer? So I'm going to show you his bed and everything, too. But right now, let me get Pipsy up here. Hey, come as he slowly wakes up to come. Hi, Valerie. Welcome. How are you? Come on. Up. Ta-da! There he is, the star of the show. Okay, hey. Stand up. Stand up. No, he's going to climb on my lap. Oh, boy, oh, boy, boy. You just know how to ruin a moment, don't you? Okay, stand. He's like... I want to sleep. I know. Okay. So you get to see his nose. <laughs> Trust him on this, right? Let me just see if I can tip this down here. I don't know. Let's see. Yes, trust me to have a shy service dog, right? Here we go. Okay. There he is. Does he say hi? Hey, you see the dog in the camera? See it? I mean, right there. Yes, I know. I'm right here. Did... Okay. Well, well, we'll let you show off in a minute. You just go ahead. Don't worry about us over here. You just go right ahead and sleep. Relax. Take a load off. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put this guy back up. Okay. Sorry about that, y'all. We'll see if we can't get him right back up in a few minutes. Oh, I bet. Okay, so pull it up here. So y'all have asked about getting him, and we got him. We drove from Virginia to Kansas and picked him up there. He is a CARES pup. Um, he's been in two prisons. They have the prison training for don't they? Yeah, yeah, I see you. You know, you, you could cooperate. Anyhow, um, CARES does a great job uh, with their dogs. And he has been, they use a prison training program. So he's been in two separate prisons. So like, I don't know what this dog has done, but he must have a pretty in-depth of a rap sheet. Right, Pup? I think he got it for stealing hearts. Probably stealing pillows. Maybe theft of a blanket or two. What else does dogs get in prison for these days? Oh, I know. You're just going to be all cute, but out of the camera. We'll get him. Don't worry. Um, so, anyway, CARES does the prison, tra prison training program, and we had to go there for 10 days, and that's where you actually learn how to work with your service dog. Now, the service dog's already trained to do lots and lots of things, uh, in this case, he's trained to retrieve, brace, go get whatever item 
that I need, um, whether it's, you know, in the other room or I've dropped it right in front of me. He's also trained to go get someone, to go get help or to go get dad, um, things like that. Uh, he's toilet trained, just lots of different things. Obviously, brace to help with mobility. Um, he can help me up out of the floor. He can hopefully alert for seizures. Now, the thing about alerting for seizures or blood sugar episodes, if you have that, is that that comes out of the bond. Like, the dog will be able to, is trained on how to respond, okay? But in order for the dog to actually alert, they have to be bonded with you pretty tightly. And that just comes out of the, the friendship of, you know, trainer and human. Or handler and human, since he's already trained. So, having said that, let me peek over here in the chat room and see if we've got any questions. Ah, my live stream just went away. Let's see what we got here, if I can reach it. Okay. There we go. Ta-da. I've got it pulled up now. And I'm using my little air conditioner that we tried out the other day because I wanted to do this from the RV. And the thing about having the travel trailer set up and doing it here is that I can't run the air conditioner on a household current. Um, it has to be plugged in to a 30 amp halo, 30 amp current, uh, or 50 amp. So let's see. We have got a dog falling into the floor. Are you okay? Are you okay? Okay. Good grief. I can't believe you just did that. You want to hop back up here? Come on. There you go. I can't believe you. Okay, there's probably a reason why Pipsy's name is not Grace or Grace. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So, let's see. In the house, we've got Women's Station Channel, Stellar Piper, Valerie Reese, P and Peter Parker. So, hey, you all. And let's see. Valerie says that she is by her fire pit. Ooh, that sounds nice. And Norfolk and Western Real Man is here. So, hey, Norfolk and Western. Good to see you all. Um, okay, Valerie says she cooked dinner over the fire, and she'll have a video out Wednesday afternoon, which sounds cool. That sounds cool. And let's see, Stella Piper says, Valerie roast a marshmallow for me, and Peter's saying, please don't get burned by the fire pit. Good ones. Very good. All right. So the whole the whole process um, to getting a service dog, I want to answer this. Alyssa, who sent in um, the funds for the water bottle that I have, asked me to talk about the process on how to get a service dog. Uh, they're all a little slightly different, but they're pretty much the same among the agencies that I looked at. And so if you're going to go with an agency, there's Hello. They require, <laughs> they require a letter um, stating that you have a disability and qualify for a service dog because service dogs are task trained to help someone who has a disability. So research, find your agency that you want to go with. Um, then you will have to have a letter of support from your doctor. Uh, also expect to have to have some letters of references uh, letters of reference, rather, uh, from friends and possibly your veterinarian if you've previously had a service dog. Harris didn't ask for that, but some of the places that I looked at did ask for that. Um, and certainly they want to know, you know, what your disabilities are, what you need the dog trained to do. And so fill out all of that and send it in. Oftentimes there is an application fee. CARES charge like $50 for the application fee. Um, then they look over your application and let you know if they accept it or not. And if they accept it, then they'll tell you roughly what you're looking at for the time frame. So from the time I applied and his the application for him 
was accepted um, took me just a little over a year and a half uh, from that point, which is not bad because basically what it is is they start looking for the dog's parents then um, and then they start training it to raise it. So you're going to be waiting 18 months because your pup's got to grow. Yeah. And some dogs, you know, are a little bit younger, a little bit older, um, but around 18 months of age is generally when you're going to be able to get the service dog. Uh, and so you will fill all that out. You'll send it in. They'll tell you. And then at that point, you can start your fundraising. If you're going to be working with a 501c3, that opens up a lot of doors for fundraising. That going with a private trainer won't, although you can still raise funds if you're going to utilize a private trainer. Um, and that's, I, I said private trainer, let me back up. There's two basic ways. Uh, one is uh, using a trainer. The other one is to use an agency. You can train the dog yourself, but I strongly recommend using a trainer because it's really easy to mess up. Let me just say that. Um, so as far as going with an agency to get your service dog, um, that's the process for paperwork. Then you do your fundraising. Now, CARES asks for a $5,000 contribution. You really are not paying for the dog. You're paying for everything that goes into training your dog. So, uh, and the vet care, and the food, and all the things that go into ownership of the dog, that's what you're paying a portion of. Um, obviously, you know, the service dogs are valued at $30,000. Obviously, most people don't have that kind of cash laying around. Service dogs from CARES, cost $5,000, so you can see that there's a little bit of a difference in 5k and 30. So they could not do, they could not offer the dogs at this price were it not for prison-based training programs, and like I said, this dog's been in two tr prison-based training programs. Uh, also, they worked with social homes and puppy raisers, to get the dog to the point where you can go to Kansas and spend your week to two weeks learning how to work with your dog, which is really cool. Um, I, I call it service dog boot camp or doggy boot camp, um, but there's a lot that goes into it even though the dog is already trained. Um, you have to learn the lingo to tell your dog to sit and stay and all the things he's got to do. If it's mobility, you've got to brace, up touch, things like that. Um, if he's an alert dog, then you've got to work with some language for that. And even though some of the words may be the same from among the, among the different programs, the meanings can be just a little bit different. Like for him, up means to come and get in your lap, or I'm sorry, to come and get on the bed or, you know, a higher, I don't want to say this too much because he'll do it, but onto a higher surface. Um, pause up is what I used to use with Tomlin that I was told to use for him to come up in my lap. With this one, it's just lap. So where Tomlin was for getting up, pause up was in the lap. Um, and for him to get up, I just said up, and that did put him on a surface, either a couch or the bed. Up for this dog means he's going to get up to the surface, probably put his paws on it, and get ready to hand you something with his mouth. So same word, it's just different. So part of the process of how to get a service dog is to go to a boot camp for just basically any program that you apply to and learn how to work with the dog and learn um, all the th things that he's been trained to do and how to get the dog to do them uh, for you. Also important uh, to build your confidence. If you're not confident about going into a restaurant or a business with your service dog, you will be by the time boot camp is over. <laughs> Let me just say that. Also, there is a public access test that the service dogs have to pass to actually be a service dog. And if they can't pass that, then they either fail you 
or you just go for more training. It depends on how much the dogs struggle with the test. It's a pretty complicated test. Like for us, we went to the mall and they lined the dogs up and they stepped over them and they dropped food in front of their face and they put it up next to their snout. The dogs were not supposed to move at all. They bounced balls in front of them. They rolled balls. One of the balls went rolling and it hit him on the leg and he didn't even go to grab it or anything, which this is a Labrador retriever. So it's kind of hard for him not to go after a ball. Oh, and did I mention that while we were having this test done, we were at the food court and across from the play yard. So there was lots of distractions and things going on. Um, and at one point, uh, we were told to put the dogs on a down stay, which is where they're down and they're, they're staying. They can move around, they can look around, but they just can't get up. And then we were told to drop the leashes and go away to some place where the dog couldn't see us. That was hard stopping because I was like, am I still going to have a dog when I get back? But the trainers were there, you know, to watch the dog. Everything was safe, you know, no problems there. But I didn't want to go off and leave my dog because I was like all these, you know, what ifs. But it was fine. I got back and he hadn't even budged. So other than like roll over on his side and then poke his head up when I came in. No problems there. So... Yay! Very glad. So, all right, let's see. I'm going to check the chat here. And go into... Oh, Candy the Wee Service Dog is here. Hey, Candy! And Norfolk and Wester says... Oh, Women's Station Channel says she's watching on her TV now. Couldn't hear earlier on the tablet. Sorry. I'm I'm just glad you're here. Thank you for hanging out with us. Good grief. Appreciate that. And Peter has some bad news, so let me scroll down and see what that's going to be, because I don't like bad news. Um, and Norfolk and Western says it's a classic rail Pennsylvania Western railroad style 2-6-0 mobile. Wow. Um, steam locomotive with a rear cab. That sounds cool. Stellar Piper's saying that sounds neat, too. So, did I say hi to Busy Lady? Hi, Busy Lady. Just want to make sure. Um, oh. Peter, I hope not. Found a lump on his left side going to the doctor Monday to have it checked out. Thinks it could be cancer. I'm sorry, Peter. Hopefully it won't be. Um, we'll just keep our fingers crossed and, and plan on that. Um... Let's see, Norfolk and Western says the old cab was broke and parts were missing on it and it was a wreck. Okay. That sounds like it was difficult to put back together. And going back to Peter, he thinks if it is, it could be a stage four. I hope not. We'll just wait and hope that it, it's not and hope that all the tests come back and he's wrong. That's what we're going to hope for and pray for. Uh, let's see. Norfolk and Western says, The G-scale train is whistling and clicking around the tracks. Cool. Okay, Valerie just switched to her laptop, too. Women's Station Channel says, Love being here. Busy's uh, just stopping by. She wants to know how the dog is. He's doing fine. Um, the only thing is he just fell off the here a few minutes ago. That was a loud clunking earlier in the video. What can I say? Um, oh, yeah, I've got a note here. Um, what kind of dog is my service dog? Service dogs can be any breed. This one happens to be a yellow golden, a yellow Labrador Retriever. I can't get my mouth to work. So, yeah, so the kind of service dog I have is yellow Labrador Retriever um, super great, sweet dog, sweet personality, and really pretty smart. He's actually a little younger than most service dogs are. Uh, this one is 13 months of age, and the others are usually 18 months, but it is working out great. So, yeah. 
It's actually my second one because the first service, with this program, the first service dog that they gave me with this program was a super sweet dog. And he was fabulous in the classroom to get him outside and get him with other people and his little brain just shuts down. Y'all have seen videos of service dogs who were so friendly that they bond their training. You know, like maybe they went around getting everybody else's treats out of the bowls. Or maybe you told them to sit and they just rolled over on their back. Yeah, trust me to get a time like that, just saying. But this one is working out swimmingly. Okay. Um, let's see, Peter Parker says, be right back. His dog wants to go outside. Gotcha. Well, we'll see you in a minute. Oh, and Candy the Wee Service Dog is here. So, hi, Laurel. Good to see you. So, all right. Let me show you where the service dog sleeps um, in the RV. Because we took the travel trailer when we went to get him in Kansas. And he took me to this like a duck to water. Except... You will not see his bed in here that I got because I got him this lovely, thick, padded bed, and he did not use it. He ever so politely shoved that off to the side and got on a towel. So everything is inside the house now. I just came out here to do the stream to show you all where he sleeps in the RV. Um, so you won't see the bed for those two reasons, but you will see his little towel. And... He's in the floor, I don't know. But anyway, let me show you where he sleeps. Come on, I have to get up. Okay, so the travel trailer, first off, is not very big. Right here behind me, this is the bed. It folds up, and we have the couch here, of course, that we sit on, lounge on, and so forth. Over here, we have our kitchen table, except it's not a kitchen table right now. It's a bed. Um, if a person was sleeping on it, we would have all of these cushions that you see right here would be spread out on this platform and be all nice and comfortable. So the platform over there is where we had his nice thick bed. It's only got a piece of plywood on it, so I thought the beds would be nice and comfortable, which he promptly scooted off, scooted over, and at some time scooted off the bed onto the floor, so he could get onto the tabletop, and his towel, which was on the bed, got moved to the tabletop, all by this guy. Say hello. Flick your tail or something. Are you still alive? Hello. Okay, he flashed his eyes. He opened and closed his eyelids. So, stand. There you go. Come up. There you are. There you are. Let's see. Say hi. You gonna say hi? Hmm? High five? Yeah, it's a good high five. I'll give you a hug. Yeah, good hug. Okay. So anyhow, this is where he would sleep while he's in the travel trailer. Okay. Good boy. You can get off now. Yeah, off. I knew you'd do this. How did I know? Okay, you can come on up. You want to come on up? We'll see if he does it this time. Hello. Where are you going? Are you taken with the fan? Huh? Yeah, I think he is. So... <laughs> Now, okay, another thing he could be, he could have been in prison for stealing couches. Are you trying to push me off my own couch? 
Silly boy. What can we say? So, anyhow, let me let me check some of the comments here. Let's see. Busy says you're adorable. Do you agree? I think you agree. And you're even being called the cutest. I'll have you know. Um, Stellar has to leave the chat for a bit, but she's going to be watching the stream. So, yeah. A busy says, I'll see you all later. Take care. Go to work on her house. Okay. Bye, Busy. Women's Station Channel says, oh my gosh, your living quarters are so beautiful. Thank you. It, they're really, it, it's nice. I wouldn't say beautiful, but I appreciate your thoughts there. It's so attached to you. Yeah, we've actually tried our best to get him attached to me. So, like, part of the process of getting a service dog is that after you get him, the people who go with you to the training or live in your house are not supposed to really do anything with the dog for yawn uh, for the first little bit and that's to help him bond with you so you're the one that's doing every single thing so if your dog has to go out to tinkle every two hours you are going out with your dog to tinkle every two hours hang on just a second i just heard a noise outside the door i want to see what's up another dog out there. Oh, I thought so. so. Sorry. Heard another dog out there, so I wasn't sure what was that. Uh, so, yeah. So that's how it is right now with getting him. I am going to do a video sometime on the travel trailer. I just want to answer, wanted to answer the question about where does the service dog sleep in the RV when we're in the travel trailer. Um, because on the road trip to Kansas, that was a consideration. And we even, like, we all kind of argued with ourselves going back and forth. And I'll be honest with you, there was a couple of nights that he was like, I'm just going to check the bed. Can I just come sleep with you? And we're like, I have sucker in a flashing neon sign on my forehead. So, yeah, he could come up and sleep with me. Which is, it helps with the bonding. It also helps the dog to know you're normal because everybody has, our bodies are in a range of normal. And so for him to alert, he has to be able to tell what your normal isn't. So like in class one day, one of the ladies had a strobe light on her cell phone. So when it rang, it automatically did the strobe. Well, that's all wonderful, except that it was just a few feet from me, and maybe 10, 15 feet, and it starts flashing, and it's like right in my line of sight. Well, my seizures are photosensitive, which means they react to light. So I started getting like a migraine type headache, getting sick to my stomach, headachey, and so up up here, realized that something was going on, and he just starts pawing me, and starts headbutting me, but I was new to the dog and he was new to me, so I didn't realize that it was an alert until talking to the trainer later and she's like, yeah, that was an alert. So the next time I've got to shower him with treats, but I really didn't, I didn't know. And he did something like that um, once before. He's also alerted, I have a nerve problem in my back, so he, that damaged nerve causes my leg to cramp really badly. It's not like a, a Charlie horse where you've been running and you get a cramp in your leg. I cannot even describe this one. It's neurological and it's awful. And so there's actually been, um, he was reacting to that. My leg started twitching. The night of graduation when we're on the stage in front of like everybody. So he started to alert for that, and the other day I was on a phone call and my leg started to cramp, and then about, but he had started acting like his alert behavior about 10 minutes before my leg cramped. So I don't know if that goes together or not. I'm going to wait and see the next time it happens and see what happens with my leg and with the dog. So 
go from there. Um, Valerie says, how is your grandbaby doing? She is doing great. She is at the way that she is supposed to be for her gestational age, maybe just a few grams ahead, but she's, she's on target for that. Her eye exam that she had a few weeks ago, it was on target for her gestational age. And I'm saying gestational age because she's over a month old, but she was 25 weeks and some days when she was born. So everything is on the gestational curve. So like, um, she was born in May and she was due in August. Hopefully she'll come home around that time and if she does, my daughter will essentially be bringing home a three-month-old newborn. So newborn, because that would be her gestational age, three months old, because calendar-wise, she was born in May and not August. But Brianna's doing really, really good. Um, we are having a hard time finding clothing for her, because the clothing... Right now, she's still in neonatal intensive care. So all the clothes that she wears has to be NICU friendly. So we're like running around trying to find, you know, like little caps for her to put on or little socks for her feet and little outfits to wear because the outfits are special and they can't have, they have to open and close at the shoulders. They have to be able to get to all of the sides quickly. And so it's, they're just really hard to find. So other than that, she's doing great. But, you know, hopefully she'll be in regular preemie clothes soon. She can wear them if they were NICU friendly. So we're working on that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, thank you. Please do keep us updated. And that was directed at Peter. Also, he says, watch out for new scams and phone scams out there. <sighs> Those are awful. Yes, don't open vinyl attachments. Absolutely. Block cookies. Yep. I like it on the computer better. Okay, great. I'm glad. So, you all, if you want information on dodging scams and stuff, um, pay attention to what he wrote. In the live stream chat. Oh, and please don't forget to give me a thumbs up on the live stream because that really helps me out. And you can share it with your friends too because that helps also, especially, whoops, especially if they've got uh, questions about the service dog. So, the other question that somebody messaged me and I forgot who, so bear with me on that. And I am sorry if you've sent me a message and I've not gotten to you, but I have almost two weeks of stuff to catch up on and then more coming in each day. So I am trying, but you just bear with me, okay? Thank you, please. Um, so somebody else has asked me if my service dog is going to New Mexico with me because that's where my daughter is. And the answer is yes. My service dog definitely will be going to New Mexico and anywhere else that I go. Uh, at least for the foreseeable future. I can't imagine any place, you know, maybe if I was sick and hospitalized or something. But, yes, the service dog is going on the road trip with me to New Mexico. Uh, we're just going to take it as it comes. Now, for that, that trip is going to be van life we're anticipating right now. Unless the baby doesn't come home. As scheduled, if it looks like she's going to be late coming home, then I may wait about going out there. Um, my goal is to go out and help set the nursery up and get it ready for her um, before she comes home. So, if all goes well, uh, we'll be going out next month. He'll be coming with me. He traveled like a dream. He just did great. Uh, honestly, I took a trip several years ago. Um, with someone, and this dog traveled better than she did, and that's, that's all I'm going to say, um, so, and it was an older person, it, it was not Stellar Piper or a friend or anybody in the, in the recent five or ten years, um, 
Now, taking him out to New Mexico is going to be a lot different than having him, you know, in Tennessee or Virginia, North Carolina, and so forth, because the heat is a lot higher, and it's a drier heat. So, you don't notice the dry heat as much as you do a humid heat, but it pulls liquid out of you faster so you can dehydrate easier. So I've got to really increase the water. Got to make sure it stays cool. Uh, obviously, got to make sure the van stays cool and that we stay cool each other. Um, but you don't want to give them hot water and you don't want to give them even warm water. You want to give them, you know, a good quality, slightly cool water. So we're going to be keeping that cool for them. Keeping him on schedule is going to be a big thing because um, although service dogs are trained to be somewhat varied in their schedule, it's still better to kind of stick with, if not a certain time schedule, stick with a certain pattern. That way you're less likely to forget something and you'll be able to, you know, he'll know the structure more. Because you don't want to be so busy taking care of your service dog and get off schedule and then realize that, oh, you forgot to take your meds, or you forgot to brush the dog, you know, something like that. So having a schedule really helps. Um, also, New Mexico is a lot different, too, in the type of plants that they have. Um, a lot of their plants have burrs, and so, or I'm sorry, a lot of the areas have plants that have burrs, and that can be very damaging to his feet. I'm going to turn this down. Um, that can be damaging to his feet. They can get in between his paws and cause all kinds of trouble. So he's going to get used to wearing boots for that, or we hope he'll get used to it anyway. That's the goal. Uh, so that'll help protect his paws. So yeah. So yes, definitely he is going to New Mexico. Anywhere else I go? And yes, um, he can go most of the places that humans can go. So going to restaurants, parks, and so forth shouldn't be an issue. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I hope I'm not fixing to have an asthma attack. Hold on here. I know you're looking at me. I get it. He's like, am I fixing to have to do something for mom? <laughs> okay. Um, is there a PayPal account that we can start? Oh, saving so to send money for your grandkids' clothes. Um, if you want to, yeah, just use my PayPal. I'll send it on to her. Um, and my email address down below is my PayPal account. Also, I think I have had in the past, I've had the PayPal link down below. I'm going to check that. I'll post it in the forum, if you, in the group over in Facebook, if you want. I appreciate you offering to do that. Um, okay, PayPal's not down there. Patreon is. Uh, but I'll get the... I'll just po go ahead and post the link for the PayPal over in the groups. So, if you guys want to do that, that'd be great. Um, yeah, they'd appreciate it. Uh... It's, there, it's very difficult when you have a child that's sick because you've got to wrestle, too, with getting to the hospital. And in their case, it's like an hour plus each way. So they're spending about two hours and 20 minutes round trip. So they've got that juggling the cost of gas, meals, all kinds of things. Then, like, just the practical matters of how much of your maternity time and the leave do you take now versus how much are you going to need when the baby comes home, things like that. So, yeah, they'll appreciate clothes or anything, but really just the thought and definitely the prayers, I've got to say, that's huge. So let's see. Um, oh, Peter's reminding me he's about five months till Christmas. I, I think Peter just wants to see me break out in hives. I'm just saying that. Oh, Norfolk and Western Railroad Man uploaded a video of his Lionel Echo G scale train set from 1990. That is so cool. Okay, I gotta look at it. Okay, it's almost ready. 
Okay, thanks, Gail. And Peter gave me a heart with cross in it. So thank you. So yeah. I have to say too, I have appreciated all of y'all's support on, you know, going back from this fall with, with the breast cancer thing and then COVID and then long COVID and then the service dog and trying to get all that set up on top of everything and the surprise trip to New Mexico because the grandbaby decided to come early and then the trip to Kansas and then this next trip that I could not have done any of this and come out anywhere near sane if it wasn't for you guys. Not that I'm that close to being sane on a good day anyway, but y'all holding me together has been huge, and I cannot thank you enough for that. So, uh, Valerie says she's still here listening and knitting. Yay! Y'all, she does some really cool knitted stuff, so check her out. And she's always knitting hats and scarves, and she's done some gloves and things, and she donates them to people who are homeless or in difficult situations uh, come Christmas in the winter. So, yay. Okay, Peter, we will see you all next week. Um, also... I need to ask you all, or want to ask you all, next week is the 4th of July weekend. Now, often when it's a holiday, we'll switch and go from a Saturday night live stream to a Sunday night live stream. So, is that something that you all want to do, or do you want to stay on Saturday? Let me know, and um, I'll see about making it in a poll here. So should we live stream Saturday, yes or no? Asking the community there. Okay, so I've got that posted. So yeah. So I appreciate y'all. But I know that we've got lots of family commitments and maybe even some 4th of July firework commitments. I do not. I will be hanging out my regular Saturday night stuff. So if you want to stream on Saturday, I'm totally fine with that. But I'm going to let you guys chime in on it because um, we can do Sunday if you'd rather. So far, yes, at 100%. Okay. I'll give you all another minute to decide on that. Okay, um, Women's Station Channel says she likes staying on Saturday. So we could certainly do that. Ooh, Norfolk and Western Railroad says the Pennsylvania 260 does smoke. Wow, that's, that's really neat. Really, really, really neat. Okay, Valerie says that either day works for her. Okay. So, I, we'll just go ahead and stay with Saturday at 7 then. That's what we'll do. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I just realized I didn't have my hat on. Sorry about that, you all. I had my hat earlier. So, if my hair is really messy, that's why. Why did... Oh, yeah. I remember why I took it off. Somebody helped himself. One of the things that the service dog is trained to do is tug. So if you have problems taking, in, in my case, the leg brace off, then he can tug. But one of the other things that he likes to do is tug my hats off when I wear them. He is not a hat dog. So we've got to figure out a way to get that. So it's sitting there in the bathroom. I forgot to put it back on. Sorry about that, you all. Um, a Women's Station channel says, I hear you, Valerie. I set a repeat reminder on my phone and tablet. Where would we be without our reminders? The text messages, the notifications, the little ding that they make to keep us on track. I would be lost without mine. Anyway, just saying. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. 
Oh, no, not you, Al. Just the, the puddle. Sorry. I have to watch what I say, say now. I'm going to have to start spelling around the dog again. Because I said the O-U-T word, and he just worked right on it. <clears throat> okay, so, Saturday at 7 it is. That's what we'll do. We'll just stick to our schedule. Okay, Norfolk and Western Railroad Man says the video of this G-Scale train is now ready. Cool. And Valerie says she was lucky she had her phone outside and got the notification that you were live, so. Yay! <laughs> okay, Peter Parker says, Gail is going bald, LOL. Nothing wrong with it. Looks cool. Um, one of the things I did notice that since having uh, the steroids so much when I was sickest with COVID is that, yes, I am losing some hair, so. If I ever come on a live stream and I have no hair, it all fell out. So, but when my mom was going through cancer, uh, she had the chemo that made her really, really sick and caused her hair to fall out. And this was, you know, many years ago. And she used to always be so specific and so happy and proud about her hair. And then when it fell out, she was like, you know, I don't care how it comes back. I'm just going to be glad to have hair. So that's kind of my thing. So, thank you for your support on that. So, and, and I guess that could be the plus of wearing hats. I do it to be fun, but I guess that's the plus side too, right? Except I'm going to have to watch wearing them if you're going to pull them off. So, I should get that on video sometime. About the service dog pulling the hat off of my hair. That might just be a fun little clip to insert sometimes. So. And he's a fun dog. I get asked, like, even today when I was out, they were, this person was really curious and she was genuinely asking questions that she wanted to ask and she wasn't just, you know, being kind of like in your face. But she was genuinely concerned about, like, do service dogs get to play? And I was like, yes. He, he gets to play. He gets to run and chase balls and just go out and have fun when he's not working. But he knows, you know, the difference in working and playtime. And like right now, he doesn't have his harness on. So he's not officially on the job. So they do get to play. Um, the other thing that they were asking about is whether or not the service dog likes being a service dog. And I'm like, well, you know, the thing about that is he goes wherever I go. He doesn't have to worry about being left home in a kennel, staring at four walls. He gets medical care. He gets high quality dog food. He is well set up on toys. He gets groomed regularly. It's like, what dog wouldn't like that? You know, you get to stay with a human. You get to play when you want to play. All of your needs are taken care of. And, you know, the, the playing and the running and the fetching and doing all the normal dog things plus the cool things that you're trained to do. So, I think he's happy. We were out and, like, his little tail is just a wagging. So, yeah. But she was, she was concerned and she was asking about that so I love questions when they're sincere I will stand there and answer questions that anybody wants to ask as long as they're sincere and you know I've done some videos on service dog stuff and I'll be doing more of them so anytime you all have questions you know just drop them down in the comments um, let's see Valerie says her sister's hair is growing back and it looks great. Yay! Um, and she's gone through some cancer treatments and things like that. So I'm glad that it's growing back. I was surprised. I knew cancer treatments would cause your hair to fall out. And I knew that thyroid issues would cause your hair to fall out. But I didn't know steroids would do it. 
Uh, oh, Norfolk and Western says, share the video with your friends if you all want. The G-Scale train sets are on sale on eBay for $30 to $200. It's an Echo Toys train set. So, there you go. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll tweet that out and stuff later. I do have the new Twitter account, by the way. So if you're not following me on the new one, that's uh, twitter.com forward slash bodacious always. So if you are on my Gale vlogs and you want to switch to that one, that would be great. Valerie says she had chemo and radiation treatments. So she's done it all with chemo and radiation. So, well, I'm glad that she's doing okay with it, though. Because she's past that at this point, because that's had, that was past. And we actually had her on our prayer list. Let's see, I've got, speaking of Twitter, I've got a tweet coming in. What is this? Oh, it's just a general, general tweet, tweet. Okay. So, all right. Oh, Valerie is saying that Steve has a Polar Expe Express train that she keeps up. And I have seen that, I do believe. And it is really cool. Really, really cool. I like trains, though, can you tell? Um, Norfolk and Western Railroad Man says the train set is perfect for decorations like Old West or anything. And, you know, that's really kind of the neat thing about trains is you can make them holiday specific or seasonal specific. So, like, if you, if you do your setup and you want to switch out the summer trees for fall trees and things like that, you can and still keep the set... Um, set up all year and just make those changes. But you don't have to. It's just cool to have a train set up. Um, let's see. Women Station Channel says, I lose my hair a lot from Hashimoto's. I take biotin and it helps. But for the most part, it's just part of me now. You look extra relaxed and refreshed today, Gail. I'm thinking the dog. Could be. You know, I will say that having the dog has been a huge relief because I know that if I fall, he can help. Um, if he can't help, he can go get help. So we've even practiced like out and about, um, like we were at church and we practiced and my husband went and hid. And so I told him, I told Pipsy, you know, Go find dad. And so he looked at me like, why are you telling me this? You're sitting up and okay. But I told him anyway and repeated that. And then he goes off around the church. And the next thing I know is like, hello, what are you doing in here? And so, you know, he did that. And so just knowing that is a big deal. And he can open the door. So, like, if I'm in the RV, say, and my husband's outside, and I need my, I need the dog to go get my husband, you know, he can open the RV door and go out to get him. Um, and then one of the things is that he can bring, bring my husband to me by putting his mouth, like, on my husband's jacket or whatever, and then start tugging on it. That's part of the tug. Uh, to bring him to me so he can do that and so you know just knowing all of that it, it's just a big load off my shoulders um, plus you know like when I'm out driving around my husband doesn't call me every five minutes anymore because he knows if something comes up that he's going to be there to help um, if it's something that he can't help with you know he'll bark and Eventually, somebody will come just to see why the dog is barking its head off. You know, so, yeah, it could be. And, let's see. 
Um, oh, Valerie is saying that the train is in the living room on the upper ledge of the room and that she keeps adding houses. I do remember seeing that. And let's see. Peter Parker says his mom died from cancer in 2005. I'm sorry, Peter Parker. Um, I know what that's like. My mom died in 1995. So it's, it's tough and it's always on your mind. Well, Norfolk and Western says his Lionel Echo train set is worth $500. That is so cool. And just think, you know, y'all, the, the toys that we've given our kids, like if we had them and we'd given them trains when they were like young, what would they be worth now? You know, that's cool that it's $500. Valerie, I'm sorry. Her dad passed away of lung cancer in 1999. I'm sorry. So, yeah, when you have family members that have cancer, it's just, it's always on your mind. You know, that's not going to go away. Even though, like, with my breast cancer scare, when we went through the genetics testing, you know, it came back that I wasn't carrying the breast cancer gene and I didn't have the breast cancer gene. But always going to be on my mind because of my mom and I know for you guys um, who have had first degree relatives that have passed away from cancer and you've got other relatives um, in your case Val or your sister you know it's always going to be on the back of your mind so my women's station channel has baby fine hair good Hungry. And Peter's asking about smoking. You know, the only smoking I want to be around personally is the smoking on a choo choo train. Just saying. Whether it is an indoor setup or outside at Walt Disney World or like Chattanooga trains or, you know, it, any number of places. I just like there's something cool about trains that smoke. I don't know. Um, okay, using a shampoo for thinning hair. Gotcha. So, all right. Anything else? Was well, there anything else you want to say? Pipsy's making himself just at home down there. What up? You got to stretch and yawn, huh? Okay, let's not stretch and yawn too much. He's going to stay down there. Bow wow. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, Norfolk and Western. Here, here's the thing to listen to about trains because this is this is the really cool thing about it. Um, his is let me pull it back up. His G scale train set is rare and it's completed and it's not replaceable. And this is one of the cool things about trains is that. They tend to hold their value. There's not a lot of train sets that really go down in value much, although they do bounce around. Um, and his is irreplaceable. So that's, that's really something pretty cool. Um, and Valerie says, when her dad died, it brought me back to Jesus. Gail did an interview with me about it on her other channel a while back. Yes. It says rough on the floor. Oh, <laughs> well, nope. And women says, sorry, I didn't, I didn't tag you. Gotcha. So, all right. So, we do this usually for an hour, and we are here. Well, Valerie, I'd love to see that interview. Um, it's on overcoming the obstacles. 
So if you go over there, uh, you can find it. I'll see if I can't find the link and post it over in the group. But if I forget, somebody shoot me a message and remind me, okay? All right. I'm looking to see if I typed any other little notes to myself to remember anything that anybody else asked me. And I don't think so. I think we're good. So y'all, thank you very much for being out here and hanging out with me. It has been great tonight. Um, and as we decided, we'll go ahead and do Saturday next week, 4th of July weekend. So hope you all have a great week and a great weekend coming up. And I'm going to move this to get it around the dog. <laughs> so you all, thanks for hanging out. Um, Always, we're about to hashtag be bodacious, which means you're not going to let life get in the way of living. So thanks, and I will see you Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here. So y'all have a great week, and I will see you. Take care. Bye, y'all.